Good afternoon, everyone. It's such a great honor to be here and to be telling you the macro story of microfinance. I'd like to start out by saying that, you know, we're, what we do is social entrepreneurship. And entrepreneurship, uh, social entrepreneurship, is obviously that double bottom line, doing good and doing well. And what we at Acción Texas do is that we're able to be a not-for-profit organization that runs like a business, and we have an opportunity then to become sustainable one day. Um, as you remember that saying, that uh, you give somebody a fish, they eat for a day. You teach somebody how to fish, they eat for a lifetime. What we do in our work in terms of economic development is that we help people buy the pond in which they fish and to be able then to have assets and be able then to leave something for the next generation. So that's how we break the cycle of poverty, is by ha having people have a dollar. I used to think that money was the root of all evil, you know, capitalism is bad, but I too, like GP, when I was young, didn't know a lot. And so as you get older, you start thinking about what is important, and guess what? That dollar is important. If we don't have that dollar in our pocket, how can we then purchase the food that we need and the clothing that we need and the homes that we need? So Acción in the microfinance uh, world, what we're doing is helping then um, entrepreneurs to be um, the best that they can be. So um, what does that mean? What is microfinance? Well, um, you all probably have heard of Mohammed Yunus and the Grameen Bank and so on, microfinance in developing countries. And so how many of you even knew that microfinance was here in San Antonio? Raise your hand. Wow, okay, I'm impressed, thank you. Obviously, you're the smart people of me in San Antonio. <laughs> but usually, <laughs> what <laughs> usually what happens when I ask that question, maybe, you know, maybe a handful will go up. So um, the, the, the idea that microfinance is here in the United States to some is very, very new. But you can't run a microfinance organization in uh, San Antonio or in the United States like you do in third world countries. Um, uh, when, uh, as you know, microfinance is like peer group lending models. You know, this room, it could be a group, or half of this room could be a group, and we kind of co-sign for one another, and we make sure that the other person is able to pay on their loan. If, um, if I can't pay, then somebody in this room is going to help me pay for that loan. And so um, it's been very successful in most cases in developing countries. Well, if think, think about it, here in the United States, what do we have? we have a financial identity called a FICO score. The um, cutoff at a bank, FICO scores are about 700, 680 if you have a, a friendlier bank. The average credit score of one of our customers is 575. And we have a 92% repayment rate. So how have we mitigated that risk of being able then to um, lend money and getting it back, not based on FICO score? And it's the things that we did learn from the, the work in, in developing countries, like character lending and so on. So for instance, when I went to um, Mexico City as part of my training 17 years ago when I started Acción in 1994, then um, it was going and, and visiting a family. And their business was uh, selling toothpicks. And so they had a small room about 14 by 15 feet, and they had it filled with toothpicks. And the family's um, job was to go in there and get little plastic bags and fill up the plastic bags with toothpicks, no, you know, plastic gloves or anything like that, putting them in, sealing them, putting their little label on them, and then um, uh, daddy would put them in his backpack and run out to the city and sell them to restaurants and drugstores and so on. Can you imagine doing that in the United States? Absolutely not, right? And so you've heard, um, you know, we have to have a certifi certificate of occupancy. You have to have a health permit. Uh, you know, you've got to have a doing business as a DBA uh, here in the United States. So what we've learned then is even though those things are in place, we can still level the financial playing field, meaning that we can be able then to provide working capital to the working poor or not necessarily the working poor, just struggling small businesses. Because that's the other myth too uh, here in the United States, that you have to be dirt poor and that's the only reason you're not going to get access to credit. No. It's because people get overextended in their small businesses as well, or because right now in the economy that we're in, banks are just not lending. So we get people in that are, um, have a credit score of 700, but maybe they've overextended themselves in terms of credit and be able then to borrow money from us. So what does that mean, microfinance here? Uh, and how can a, a $10,000 loan work here in the United States? Well, it does work because it 
it actually, you give a loan and it goes, it goes to the entrepreneur, creates sustainability, and then it, the person pays it back, right? So it's a revolving loan fund. As the person pays back, we're able then to have additional funds to be able to put out on the street. When we first started Acción back in 1994, it was with a $50,000 grant for operations and $125,000 for lending. And it came from four banks, Frost, Broadway, what is now Wells, and what is now Chase. And it was at 0% interest to us so that we could help then start generating equity for our, um, our own not-for-profit. Well, you know, fast forward now 17 years later, we've dispersed almost $120 million. Uh, we've dispersed, uh, we have about 12,000 active clients. And, um, and our goal by the year 2014, which will be our 20th anniversary, is to have 20,000 loans out on the street. And so how do we plan to do that is trying to be as efficient as possible in terms of our underwriting to be able then to make quick decisions and get the money out on the street. So the loan then is made to the entrepreneur, it sustains the family, and then it pays back. Now, if this was an audience of donors, I would say on the set of loan there, I would have put grant. Because the grant that you donate to um, Acción goes to the entrepreneur, and it sustains uh, the, uh, the economy, and it, the grant comes back in, and so it's a gift that keeps on giving. So our financial model then is two, two um, actually there's three uh, legs to our stool in our financial model. It's grants that come in for operations, grants that come in for lending, meaning 100% of that grant goes into the loan and then it's paid back, and, and any loan losses come out of um, another fund, and then it's investments. So you all in the audience could invest in Acción, and by the way, we give 2% interest, and I would say, and you can't find a CD out there right now that will do that. You may have read a story just yesterday where CPS has invested a million dollars in Acción, um, you, we also get socially responsible investors from the different congregations throughout the country, religious congregations throughout the country in churches, the Episcopal Church in, in New York, for instance. We also have major investments from, from banks like Chase and Citibank and so on. And then we have individuals who will invest $1,000 and they leave the money with us for a year and then if you want the money back, you get it back, principal and interest, or you may wanna keep it there for another year so that we can continue to use that, um, that principal. Now the downside of that is that we are not FDIC insured, so you are taking a risk. We are not gonna be able, uh, we can't say that for sure you're gonna get your money back. But again, we've been around for 17 years, We've not, uh, uh, we've, been a, we've been growing uh, uh, every year uh, with that. Uh, we probably have um, a, uh, a, a, uh, an outstanding portfolio, which is the largest, by the way, in the United States. You may have heard of other accions throughout the country, but if you combine the, uh, the portfolio of an accion New York, for instance, or accion San Diego, or accion San Chicago, combine all those portfolios together, we are the larger, we're larger than they are totally combined. And, we're, and we're competing with big cities like New York and Miami and Al Atlanta and so on. But the reason we've done it is because of tenacity and because we wanna be the first micro lender in the United States to be self-sufficient. What does that mean? Oops, I think I went too many, right. Uh, what does that mean? That 100% of the expenses off of our revenue comes from, uh, excuse me, 100% of our expenses is covered by the revenue and no more having to go out and find grants. So let me repeat that again. We want to be the first micro lending organization in the United States to become self-sufficient or self-sustaining. Um, actually, self-sufficient is the correct definition. Self-sustaining means that you can operate from year to year. Self-sufficient means that no more grants. And I want that actually to be on my tombstone. Um, so, but if we, you know, if I do uh, happen to uh, get there f sooner, uh, maybe I can retire, who knows. So, um, so instead what we, what we are right now is about 60% self-sufficient. So we're 60% self-sufficient and 40% we're having to go out and do fundraising. So thus the need for having to be um, entrepreneurial ourselves and to be able to um, get the, the, uh, the applicate or the, excuse me, the loans out in, on the street. And we've done that by using technology. As you can see that we've, we've grown to um, the different markets, which was the next slide, um, because now no longer are we Acción Texas only. We are also Acción Texas Louisiana, Acción Texas Arkansas, Missouri, the Delta. We're in eight states now. And the way we've been able to accomplish this is by using technology, high, high tech, and also high touch. Meaning that the reason we have that 94% repayment rate 
between 92 and 94 percent, depending on the year. The, 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 low, the most we've ever lost is 98 uh, percent, uh, and I think this year we're going to lose about 6 percent of the dollars that we d uh, dispersed. But if you think about it, uh, the reason we have that is because of the high touch. The loan officer touches the, the borrower, right? And the borrower knows if they don't pay Janie back, that means that they've disappointed the loan officer, right? So they keep up that relationship. And so that's what we've learned. We've also learned that the, that the uh, small business person has to have skin in the game or they're not going to pay you back. Uh, if they don't have sweat equity or something of collateral, something of value that they bring to the table, they're going to walk away. We lost our shirts with Mary Kay Cosmetics, for instance. I thought, wow, we're going to be able to um, you know, help these women become entrepreneurial themselves, right? For $600, we give them um, a pack, you know, the, the makeup kit things, and they can go out and start selling. But they hadn't brought any skin to the table, and the collateral was the, the lipsticks. Well, you know how hard it is to go find lipsticks? It's very difficult to collect on that. So we said no more of that. So you have to have some kind of skin in the game. You had to have had something that you put into it, whether it's grandma's brooch or a car that doesn't, you know, that's not even blue book value. We've learned that it's important to them because that's what, you know, how, what they use to take the kids to school or them to themselves to work. We've also learned not to take livestock as collateral. Uh, <laughs> Because one time down in the Valley of Texas, we had goats that were grazing on these, this lady's um, lawn because her restaurant was, there's no, there's no uh, zoning or any kind of, you don't have to have special permits to have a restaurant on, in your property down in, in the colonias. So, um, so she had a restaurant there and the, and the goats were grazing. The next time I come to visit, I asked, where's the goats? And she said, well, we had them on the menu. So there you go. You can't, you know, you can't rely on goats, so no livestock. However, um, the other day, one of our loan officers, we, because loan officers have to take pictures of the collateral, and so um, you know, I, I go by her, uh, her desk, and she's got this goat on the computer, and I said, hey, Alma, you know that we don't take livestock. She goes, no, 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 it's not the goat. It's the land that's the collateral on that. And I said, ah. I said, well, what kind of business is this? And she said, oh, the man owns this herd of goats, and he has a contract with the state parks, and he goes and he takes his goats and he puts them on the park, they corral them, they eat, they do their business, then they move them to the next piece of property. And so I thought, man, we were green before even people thought we were green, right? So, <laughs> so those are the kinds of small businesses that we help. Again, another example, you know, Juana Perez down in San Juan, Texas, doesn't read or write. She was a migrant worker, um, but she and her husband decided to open up um, a grocery store down in the Colonias. And so um, with the, they had a, the, the kitchen was their, their grocery store. The kitchen in their trailer home was their, was their uh, grocery store, and it was so organized. But what she wanted with, with her $500 loan was to be able to um, buy a cash register so that she'd be able then to keep count of her pennies and her dollars, right? Because she was number literate, and that she just couldn't read or write or, you know, read uh, the, the words. So we did. We lent her the, um, the money. She was able to pay it off. The second loan, she then uh, bought uh, picnic tables so that the kids would eat outside instead of coming into her uh, kitchen because she was making jello, you know, in 25 cent cups and 50 cent cups. And so the kids could buy their candy and eat it outside. And then by, their third, by her third loan, um, she and her husband had built this building outside on their front lawn. And now they are their, the convenience store for that neighborhood. So that's one customer. Another customer is Arga who lives in the fifth ward of Houston. She uh, wanted to have Whole Foods move into her neighborhood. Of course, it wasn't, uh, it's not feasible for Whole Foods to go into her neighbor, the third ward of, of uh, or fifth ward of Houston. So she said, I'll start my own. And so she has, it's called Sunshine Foods. If you ever get um, off of MLK in Houston, if you ever get a chance to go down there, uh, she's got the, the best uh, deli in terms of um, the food that she prepares and then also sells um, uh, products that are healthy. Another customer, the other extreme, would be Ted Terrazas. Ted, in 2001, started Terra Health with a $10,000 loan uh, from us. Uh, now he just sold it for a gazillion dollars and has 600 um, employees and is giving back to the community. So it just depends on the life cycle of that business of, um, of where, where, you know, how, we, how Acción can help. So now for the future. What do we think here of San Antonio? Well, we, we, uh, we bought a piece of property, uh, two acres on Martin Street, West Martin Street. If, you're, if you ever know, if you go uh, west on Martin, if you know where Estella's restaurant is, you've gone too far. 
because it's right before Estella's restaurant on the right-hand side. And it used to be the old Trevino funeral home. And um, what we plan to do with those two acres is uh, be a learning and lending, lending center. And it's my understanding that this thing will click here, Red. Yeah, okay. So, um, the, so the idea then is not only to be able to provide um, working capital and technical assistance to the masses, but we also want to be able to create business incubators, meaning that we want to be able to help people learn how to have jobs and be able to then go out and help in, uh, sustain their own families. So this is Martin Street here. Uh, downtown is over here. Estella's restaurant is over there. And there's an elementary school, Margiel Elementary, that's right back here. So what the plan is, is that we will um, have a child development center here on the property. Let me back up a bit. Here, this would be the Acción um, headquarters of our backroom operations. Right now, we're, lo we're located on Hackberry Street down near the Little Red Barn. So what we would do is move, in, move our offices there with training and so on that we continue to do now. This conference room right here uh, would have about 100 people, and it's going to be open to the public. It's, the reason it's over here and, uh, by itself is because it's, um, uh, we want the community to be able to use it and not have to worry about uh, the secure, you know, keeping it secure from um, our Acción business here. So this child development center would house about 100 children on the first floor, and on the second floor we would have classrooms. Because what's happening all around here in these, these homes, a lot of women are there taking care of the, either their children or somebody else's children, but they're not getting them ready for kindergarten. It's really, really a after, I mean, it's really just child, um, you know, daycare, not day, you know, daycare and, and, and that's maybe a little bit of playing, but not kinder ready. And one of the 20, uh, 20 um, uh, goals for San Antonio is getting, having children ready to be able to go to kindergarten. So while if we um, could have that slide back up, um, if, we could have, if we could have a classroom back there where women, men as well, can learn to then be, have, get their permits to be able to, um, to provide child, early childhood development in their homes and start their small businesses, we come in with getting their house ready uh, to occupy uh, the, uh, the, the, small, the children th that are there. I think it would be a win-win situation. Again, that double bottom line. And then here, we would have an edible classroom where the kids can come outside, grow produce, and then sell this produce to this uh, cafe that's gonna be right here, an ice house type, where eating is outside and inside, healthy foods and so on. Again, another uh, opportunity for um, uh, um, a business incubator because somebody like the food shelter or other restaurants, maybe an, a small um, uh, pearl brewery type of idea where they come in and have uh, people learn how to be, how to run restaurants. So in closing, um, credit comes from the Latin verb to believe. And so that is what I hope you have heard today is that we believe in what we do. We believe in our um, small business owners. The small business owners believe in us, therefore they pay us back. And then uh, it, it is a way to break that cycle of poverty and to be able to grow the economy. So with that, I just really appreciate the opportunity of being here and uh, telling the Acción story. So thank you. <laughs>